JDK21 is out. Is it September already? Hey, Vlad here from devinsideu.com. Welcome to another video. If you're new here, this is mostly a Scala channel, and since Scala's primary platform is the JDK, here we are. JDK21 is an LTS release, and so I wanted to have a look at what's new. There are 15 features in total. Some of them are previews, some of them are relevant only for the Java programming language, and some of them are stable, most notably the Project Loom, aka Virtual Threads, aka Green Threads, which we will talk about right after the message from our sponsors, scalajobs.com and rustjobs.dev. Check out the links in the description below if you're looking for a job. I'd also like to welcome our newest sponsor, Software Mill. If you are a Scala shop, chances are that you use some of their libraries. Did you know that you could also hire them to help you out? Check out softwaremill.com in the description below for details. As always, this video is also brought to you by awesome people like yourself who support me on platforms like Patreon, GitHub sponsors, or by joining the YouTube membership program. You allow me to pay for a video editor and a thumbnail artist who free some of my time, which I then again usually spend with you, whether it's by answering your questions on Discord or during live streams. There's many of you and only one of me, so all it takes is a dollar. Huge shout out to my highest tier supporters, Fred Albu and Alexis Hernandez. Thank you. Cool, now the first one on the list is string templates, which is what we call string interpolation in Scala. Similar deal, you get a couple of built-in interpolators which are called template processors in Java, str dot for strings, fmt dot for printf style formatting, and the others like SQL for instance can be defined in libraries. Again, this is mostly a Scala channel, so let's not focus on this one too much, especially since Scala had string interpolation for over 10 years at this point, and it's even checked at compile time. Also, this feature is technically still in preview, so by the way, Scala is largely unaffected by the changes in the Java language itself, with the exception of the scenario where you have a source code dependency on the Java library, or when you mix Java code with Scala code and you're accessing the Java code from Scala. Check out the link in the description below to the JDK21 compatibility article, which states that the initial support was already merged and it is available for Scala 3.3.1, 2.13.11, and 2.12.18. And no need to worry, initial does not just mean hello world, it works just fine. Moving on to sequence collections. This one we can actually skip. Apparently the Java's collections library didn't have interfaces for sequence collections. It's just the interfaces though, not the collections themselves. Similarly to how we have index seek in Scala. The next one is generational ZGC, which is very relevant to us because we can use it in Scala today, especially since it's not in the preview. It's totally stable. Without getting too deep into the differences between the Java collectors, your main choices are G1, ZGC, and Shenandoah. G1 is primarily focused on throughput, whereas ZGC and Shenandoah are rather focused on latency, even though all of them could be endlessly tweaked to compensate for the other side of the Little's Law. Anyway, ZGC just became generational, which makes it more performant. For now, you'll need an additional flag to enable it, but at some point, the generational portion is going to become the default if you're choosing ZGC. And at this point, I'd argue that you should be defaulting to ZGC as opposed to G1. The generational one, of course. I haven't tested it though, so take this with a grain of salt. That said, I wouldn't be surprised if it became the default in the next LTS release, or maybe even earlier. The next two we can pretty much skip. Java is getting pretty decent at pattern matching these days, something that Scala had since its inception, which is over 20 years at this point. Fun fact, people were asking for pattern matching in Java for decades, and all the proposals were rejected because apparently pattern matching was not considered object-oriented, which is technically true. I guess we've come full circle now. We want to be able to choose our paradigm. Power to the people. Moving on to foreign function and memory API. This one is super interesting. It's essentially a replacement for JNI. Well, technically replacement is probably the wrong word because it's not like JNI is going to be removed from Java. It will stay probably for a very long time. Anyway, personally, I never needed to access something outside of the Java world, but I've seen a presentation about this one and it looks amazing. A brand new, really great API, still in preview though. I'll leave a link to it in the description. By the way, did you know that Java had a YouTube channel? In fact, if you wanted to deep dive into any of these topics, check out their channel. It's literally called Java. They've been hyping up this release for a while now. Exciting times. In fact, I never thought that I'd be using the words Java and social media in the same sentence, but here we are. The next one, unnamed patterns and variables, we can pretty much skip. It's all about pattern matching improvements in the Java language itself. Mazel tov. All right, now let's finally talk about virtual threads. Unless you've been living under a rock, you for sure heard about virtual threads, green threads, project loom, yada, yada, yada. In case you didn't, here's the TLDR. Since the dawn of Java, threads were merely thin wrappers around your host platform, your operating system threads. So in other words, they mapped one to one to the real threads, which are expensive. You can only have a couple of thousands of them, which presents a bottleneck if you wanted to map every request to its dedicated thread. 
In order to mitigate this issue, we've developed other ways of programming, whether it's with callbacks, futures, promises, streams, effect libraries like Zio or Cat's Effect, etc. The downside of them all is a learning curve and the fact that you're kind of fighting your platform's built-in model for doing asynchronous computation. Project Loom changes this by mapping multiple Java threads, which are now called virtual threads, to the real underlying operating system threads. This means that calls like thread.sleep block only the virtual thread as opposed to the real one. And they said there was no such thing as free lunch. Now it's being sold as a concurrency improvement, but technically that's not accurate. It's only a concurrency improvement if you've been programming with naked threads, which is something that I've only done in the university 15-ish years ago. For those of you using effect libraries like Zio or Cat's Effect, you will barely notice any difference. The good news is that the concurrency side of the story is also being worked on, and in fact, it's the last item on this list, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Zio 2.1 is going to ship with fully transparent optimizations for virtual threads. I haven't followed up on Cat's Effect lately, but I'm sure they'll follow suit. Play 2.9 is supposed to come out very soon, which is going to be the first release with Scala 3 and JDK 17 support. Not sure how long it will take for the JDK 21 support to arrive though. Place releases used to be primarily blocked by the Juice DI framework, and now they might be blocked by virtual threads. I'm not sure though. No pun intended, by the way. If you're interested in a project that was written from scratch specifically for virtual threads, check out the Halayden NEMA microservices framework. It's for Java though. All the links are down in the description. The next item on the list is unnamed classes and instance main methods. This one scratches the each of Java educators who are tired of explaining things like public final class or public static void main. So yeah, now they can just go void main. Yay! Moving on to scoped values. This is actually an interesting one. When green threads were first introduced, they didn't support thread local variables. Now that they're stable, they do. That said, in the future, they'll probably be replaced with scope values, which is just a better implementation. And uh, it has a slightly different spin on it. It sort of feels like implicits in Scala. Definitely click into it if you're interested. All the links are in the description below. Anyway, good stuff. Still in preview though. The next one is the vector API, which is a vector implementation which maps to platforms vectors. I've never done anything computationally intensive in Java. So even though on paper, it sounds awesome for me personally, it's not that exciting. The cool thing about it is that it will become even more performant once the project Valhalla ships with its value classes. Moving on to deprecate the Windows 32-bit x86 port for removal, which is self-explanatory. It's time for x32 to die anyway. Virtual threads don't work on it and Windows 10 is the last OS to support it, which is scheduled for end of life pretty much exactly two years from now, October 2025. The next one is prepare to disallow the dynamic loading of agents. This one is somewhat confusing. It's about the Java agents that can be dynamically loaded into your application, since like profilers, remote debuggers, or monitoring tools, for example. They're just too powerful. Not only can they change the code of your entire application, they can go beyond that and change the code of the JVM itself. That's how Project Quasar started back in the day, by the way, which is somewhat of a predecessor to Project Loom. Anyways, in the future, if you did end up needing all this power, you'll first have to restart your app and add the enable dynamic agent loading flag. It's for your own safety. The next one is the key encapsulation mechanism API, which is very welcome. Cams have been around for almost 20 years at this point, and it's about time that we stopped implementing them ourselves. I'm joking, of course, there are libraries out there like Kyber, for example. If you're not familiar, a key encapsulation is a modern cryptographic technique for securing your symmetric key by using the asymmetric or public key cryptography without padding the original key. Symmetric cryptography is fast, but it has a problem of transferring the key. Asymmetric cryptography, on the other hand, is slow, and so you use a hybrid cryptography where you use the asymmetric algorithm to encrypt the symmetric key. And with CAMs, you can do that without using padding for the key, which is much safer. You know, getting ready for the age of quantum computers. I wonder what we'll do with quantum computers. Hopefully we won't watch videos of cats all day. Not like that hasn't happened before. We finally arrive at structured concurrency. Now, whereas Project Loom is about asynchrony, this puppy is truly about concurrency. Structured programming is a discipline imposed upon direct transfer of control. If you transfer a control by calling a subroutine, aka a function, it has to eventually give this control back to you instead of using something like go to exceptions or non delimited continuations to jump into a random portion of the code and never return to you. 
structured concurrency built on top of that. If you have a function in which you create two, hopefully virtual threads, they must complete before this function returns control back to you. It's similar to the idea of the fork join pattern, but whereas fork join is usually handled by a thread pool, this one is more general. It's literally threads that you manually created in your function. So you get syntactic support for concurrency in the language. Essentially, this will allow you to use concurrency while still using regular loops or regular function calls safely. Project Loom cannot do this on its own. This bad boy can. Structured concurrency might give effect libraries a run for their money. Seriously, it's still in preview, but if you're interested in the Scala spin of it, check out the Project Ox, which is a birth child of SoftwareMill. Yes, that SoftwareMill that coincidentally sponsors this video. The sponsorship is unrelated, I swear. Anyways, check it out if you're interested. I'll leave a link down in the description and it's a link to the repo and within the readme of the repo, there are also links to the articles. And that's it. Other runtimes like Vasm, for example, are trending these days, but the JVM is still alive and kicking. Let me know what's your favorite JDK21 feature in the comments below. Mine is generational as EGC, simply because I can start using it today and benefiting from it. What's yours? All right, I hope you enjoyed this one. Check out the previous one and i see you in the next one. For now, as always, it's been Vlad from DevInsideU.com. Don't forget to like this video if you did, subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you, and if you wish to support tech education, please consider doing so on platforms like Patreon, GitHub sponsors, or by joining the YouTube membership program and watch my videos before everyone else. And most importantly, take care.